Good day, everyone. I would like to thank you for your continued support. I also would like you to share this video uh, with whomever you have not shared with. Like or dislike. And also subscribe if you have not subscribed. Make comments on the commentary, you know, on the commentary. Uh, suggest topics that can be discussed. Uh, and also, I must mention that there, there has been some comments that have been made on my email. Uh, someone has suggested a close friend, has suggest, suggested that we should discuss uh, Isaiah 53. Because if you look at Isaiah 53, it becomes difficult if you look at it as a chapter uh, in exclusion of other chapters. It becomes to dis to to it it becomes difficult to dispute that it is talking about Jesus. So if you read Isaiah 53 in isolation, some people say start from 52 verse 13. So it will be Isaiah 52, 13, 14, 15, and then Isaiah 53 one, I think, up to eight. It becomes difficult to deny that it is talking about Jesus. But the context, context is always important. And there's also someone who suggested, who, you know, uh, made some comments. If you look at the video, I think it is the video where I discuss, I say Jesus lied. I mean, not Jesus, the church lied to us or let the church lie about many things. You'll see the comments and the discussions that I had with, uh, uh, with someone who made, who made a comment there. Uh, we move forward. Um, I want to make a few corrections. In the previous video where I was talking about the Messiah, or the, the terminology that is used or misused and corrupted by Christians. I mentioned that the first person to be anointed in the, New, in the Old Testament was Aaron. He was anointed by Moses, and I said, and his two sons. It's an error there. Um, oh, yeah, let's say, let's, let's consider it an error, because... Moses uh, anointed Aaron and he anointed him with his four sons. So Aaron had four sons. But what happened was that after anointing them, um, uh, they had to start their priestly duties. The first two sons of Aaron went into the temple and they offered what the Bible called a strange fire. And so fire consumed them. They were not supposed to, 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 you know, to offer that fire. It's called a profane or strange fire. So they died instantly. On their first day, they did something that was not supposed to be done. They died instantly. Same day, they were consumed by fire. This is how serious a high priest, the, the duties of the high priest were considered. <clears throat> Sorry. No mistakes were accepted. So they died. So Aaron was left with two sons. So, and they continued to do their priestly duties as high priests. The other error that I made when I was talking about people who are anointed, uh, I said that King Cyprus. Cyprus of Persia was also God called him my anoint my anointed. But it's not King Cyprus. You you I mean you must have picked it up that I was uh, Cyprus is a country, so it's Cyrus. Okay. That being said, let's move on with the topic for today. In the previous videos, we talked about salvation, and we also talked about 
How then do we get saved? Now, today I want to address another important topic. If you are not saved, according to Christianity, it is believed that you are going to hell. Um, it is believed that if you are not saved, you are going to hell. But this is not the only thing that will get you to hell or condemnation. If you don't believe in Jesus, that he is the Messiah, you are also going to hell. If you, are pray, if you pray and you don't end your prayer in Jesus' name, if you don't honor Jesus, you are going to hell. But what happens if your faith is based on a false doctrine? If in the first place Christianity is a false doctrine, what do you think about you who believe that, you know, who believe in Christianity? If there is hell, are you not going to hell? You know, within the Christian movement, the, I, I think I indicated that Christians themselves believe that other Christians are not, are not born again, and therefore they are not saved. So within the Christian movement, it is estimated that there are about 2 billion Christians, or just over 2 billion Christians, or people who confess Christianity to be their faith. And amongst them, there's about 1.4 billion uh, Christians who associate themselves with Catholicism. They call themselves Catholic Christians. And evangelical Christians don't believe that um, Catholics are saved. So you have quite a lot of Christians who also among themselves believe that they are saved and others are not saved. But we have to think about this a little bit deeper. If we say that people who don't believe in Jesus will go to hell, it means all Muslims are going to hell because Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is God and Jesus is, is the Son of God. It means all of them are going to hell. It means all Jews are going to hell. It means all those who believe in Buddha, all those who believe in the gods of the Hindi are going to hell. It means all atheists, no matter what good and what you do, it doesn't matter, you're going to hell. So, I mean, hell means, it means that hell is quite a large place or maybe a small place which will contain souls. Yeah. But that's what, that's what it means. It means people, a lot of people. It means I'm going to hell. Because I don't believe that the Bible is saying that Jesus is the Messiah. The New Testament says that. But the Old Testament does not say that. Now for that matter, I want to quote two scriptures in the New Testament, which are quoted in the book of, in the Gospel of Luke, and in the letter of uh, in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, these verses that are quoted don't exist. They don't exist. Let's start with the first one. The first one is found in Luke twenty four, verse forty six. It says, or it reads as follows: This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise, and rise from the dead, sorry. Let me repeat that. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. This is one scripture. And the other one says it, it is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the to scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to scripture. So these two um, verses are saying that it is written that Christ will die and will be risen on the third day. And they say according to scripture. 
When they say according to scripture, the scriptures that existed during the time of the writing of these uh, gospels and these letters, they were the Old Testament. Those were the only scriptures that were known. And they were referring to the scriptures that we now call the Old Testament. I'm saying to you, these scriptures don't exist. Go and look up these scriptures in the Old Testament, this reference from the Old Testament. Go check it up. They are quoting things that don't exist. The Old Testament does not say that the Messiah will, will die and will be risen on the third day. There's no scripture that says that. And it is quoted there, and people believe it. They believe that the Messiah died and was risen on the third day because the scripture said that. Now, if the scripture doesn't say that and somebody says it says that, it is false. It is false. And if you want to argue that it is the word of God, God does not make such mistakes. God is not man that he will make mistakes like this. Now we have to, whether we like it or not, we have to think about what the New Testament is. We might be blinded by the fact that a lot of people are not dumb. And, you know, pardon my language, we have a lot of educated people who believe in the New Testament, professors who are educated, doctors, theologians, some histor biblical historians, and some who went to the seminaries and studied. So, you know, when we, when we get information from these people, we believe. And nothing makes us doubt because in the first place we believe that this is the word of God and therefore we are not allowed to doubt it. But the word of God, if God can make mistakes, how can we believe him? God can't make mistakes. All the things that he has said in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, pardon me, not all of them, but most of them, this is the reason why I believe that the Old Testament is the authentic word of God. Whether you want to call it the word of God or the, the record of the word of God. I don't care what people want to call it. Whether they want to call it the word of God or the record of the word of God. It doesn't matter for me. Then, you know, it is the word of God. He has spoken many things in the Old Testament. He has warned the Israelites hundreds of years, that if they don't obey him, these are the things that will happen to them. And those things happened. And then he said, if you repent, I will have mercy on you. There will be a remnant that will be left, and they will revive the nation of Israel. And that has happened. And he said many other things, but nothing of the things we read about in the New Testament. He has said nothing about the virgin birth, the virgin birth of, of Jesus. I will discuss it. Uh, it is found in uh, Isaiah 7 for verse 14. It's misquoted in Matthew. Matthew 1, I think, after just after you read about the, the I think it's Matthew 1 or Matthew 2. Just after you read about the genealogy of Jesus, which I also think is a misplaced, uh, forged thing. It doesn't make sense. So we need to read these things and reread them in context. And then make a decision of what they are exactly. Now my point for today is, who is going to hell exactly? And we need to discuss in detail what hell is. Because in the, New, in the Old Testament, you will not find reference of people who are going to hell. 
It's a new concept which is largely found in the, in the New Testament. And it is introduced as a threat. So people believe because they are scared of the description of hell. People are afraid of dying. In spite of what Jesus tells people, Jesus continuously say to people, have no fear. Do not worry. But people are scared because a picture of hell has been painted. And then it, we are told that if you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe that he's the Messiah, you will go to hell. So people believe. Even if when they read, they, you know, something doesn't make sense, uh, but they say, okay, well, you know, it's the word of God, we believe it. We'll take it as it is. But that's dangerous because men are capable of doing corrupt things because they are men. So if men are capable of doing corrupt things, and I can assure you, and I think it is debatable, if biblical scholars agree that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were not written by eyewitnesses. Um, the eyewitnesses, people who lived with Jesus, did not write anything. In the book of Acts, we are told that Peter and John, at least, were illiterate. They couldn't read and write. So how did they write Greek? Doesn't make sense. Some people wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and, and they were not eyewitnesses. They were writing from sources that they also got. And they compiled these Gospels. And now we find, and there are many other things which were added later on after these Gospels were written. About a hundred years or two hundred years later, some additional things were added by church fathers in the Gospels. It can't be the word of God. It's inconsistent. It's, it's not true. Like the things, Luke 24, verse 46, and 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. They don't exist. The scripture that they are quoting is the Old Testament, and there's no such thing in the Old Testament. Is God not a merciful God? Will God not forgive us if we repent of our sins? Why would God send us to hell if we don't believe in Jesus when he never mentioned anything about Jesus in the Old Testament? Abraham did not know Jesus. Isaac, Jacob did not know Jesus. The Israelites were not taught that the Messiah will be a divine being who will be born of the Spirit of God. They know that the Messiah will come. But they don't know that the Messiah will be born of the Spirit of God. It's not in their scriptures. In the Hebrew scriptures, in the Old Testament, there are many other righteous men who died without knowing Jesus. Are they in hell? No, they are not in hell. For that matter, Enoch was taken by God because of his righteousness. It is believed he did not die. Elijah, the prophet of God, was taken by God. He did not die. And it said nothing about Jesus. He said a lot of things about the Messiah that will come, but nothing about Jesus. That Messiah that is spoken about in the Old Testament, is not Jesus. Because he is not a divine being. He will be born in the line of David. Not by the Spirit of God, but by man and a woman. Let's continue to read. If you come across a chapter that you would want us to discuss, let's, let's, let's deal with it. Let's discuss it. Thank you very much for your attention today. Thank you very much for your continued support. Please share this video. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. Until next time, goodbye.